guys, we're gonna totally install the shower faucet today. Yeah! Okay, so what I got with me today is a Moen. This is the Hamden shower faucet, okay? It's a tub shower faucet. Um, no, I am installing it into a shower only. Um, a lot of people are like, well, you said tub shower. Well, it's actually a very simple thing to do to change it, okay? And most shower faucets just come tub and shower just because it's easier to package them that way. So you, you, it works for everything, okay? So I'm going to take you through the process of removing the old faucets and putting the new one in. And if you guys didn't choose the hand in from Moen, if you chose something else, um, this actually is going to be almost identical for any modern Moen shower faucet, okay? Um, almost everything except for the trim kit will be identical. Okay, you see over here we have trim kits and shower heads and all that stuff and it's a tub spout, okay? We've got some handles and stuff. This right here is our shower faucet. That's what we need right away. Um, this is a rough-in kit. This is where, like when the new construction is happening. Um, we, we don't really need that. Okay, we already know where the faucet's going to go because we're putting it exactly where the old faucet was, okay? So here's a very standard modern Moen uh, faucet cartridge, okay? And check this out. This is something a little bit newer. Uh, they give you a little cap, and this is what's going to cap off the, the part going to the, to the bathtub if you don't, if you don't need it. Um, now, if you're going to come with this, not a big deal. Just got yourself a half inch, you know, uh, FIP brass or galvanized cap. That's it. Okay, one great thing to do when you start off is kind of mapping out your plumbing and how you're going to set this up before we go any further. Um, now definitely before we cut these pipes, make sure that water in the whole house is shut off. I'm going to remind you again here right before we do it. So here's the new Moen faucet. Okay, and there is, right up here, if you can read it or not, I don't know if I can get it angled right, it says up. Anyway, so it's right there and they're stamped on the brass, okay. So, and we're just putting this in temporarily, okay, so people are going to be like, hey, there's no thread tape. Yeah, I know. We're just, we're just kind of piecing it together and make sure we got what works. Oh, there's a little security thing. Let's cut that off. Okay, got the security tag cut off. So we're going to line it up and kind of see what we want. All right. Now, some of you would be like, well, why don't you just solder it and stuff like that and, you know, desolder what's there and resolder it. I'll be honest, I'm not very good at soldering. And, you know, I, I do a lot, a lot of plumbing. I never got good at soldering. I never did very much of it. And honestly, I kind of suck at it. And <laughs> I'll be honest, I do. And doing it on a remodel project when there's water in the pipes, anytime that water gets pulled up and hits that solder while you're trying to solder, it, it ruins up that solder joint every time. I know people say you can put like white bread in there. But, um,. Yeah, anyways, I'm just going to use compression fittings, okay? And if, since you're probably not a professional watching this video, I have to assume that since you're watching this video, it's a lot easier to use compression fittings and galvanized fittings and screw it together than it is to solder inside of a wall that's already been built on pipes that have water in them, okay? Okay, so this is what I come up with mine. Because the one side is tight, I've got a street elbow and the galvanized going into a brass compression fitting. Okay, um, here's the cap they gave us. Like I said, any half inch cap will work, whether it's galvanized or brass. Here's another compression fitting going on there and a compression fitting going up. Okay, so we're going to mark the copper pipes on exactly where we need to cut them so that this will go just snap it right in, almost right into place, which is going to be nice. Um, real quick pro tip or at least it's maybe just my opinion, when you buy the compression fittings, I bought some at Lowe's and Home Depot, and see this is called a ferrule. It fits inside the big nut, and it compresses around the copper pipe. A lot of these new fittings kind of have the ferrule built in, you know, it, it doesn't come out of the nut. It's, it's a little sleeve, and um, I had that, that fitting fail on me, and it's not the first time I had that fitting fail. So I went to um, a local hardware store, which has kind of a better plumbing supply, um, so a, a good hardware store with a good plumbing supply or plumbing supply store it's where I recommend getting you compression fittings they generally be a higher quality fitting because we don't want this to fail we don't want this to fail and leak inside the wall All right. so now it's time just double check that everything's lining up right let's get some thread tape on these fittings and get and tighten them down okay here we go ready to line it up and mark on the old faucet where it's going to be cut off from okay I do have 
a quick tip I'll throw up at the top right of the screen there on a, on a good way to wrap your threads with the thread tape. Okay. Other than that, oh, another quick tip. Um, some people are like, well, where do I clamp onto this faucet so that I can crank down my fittings, right? Um, rather than doing that, I prefer to actually do them from opposite ends. So I'm saying do the top and the bottom together and crank them so that they're fighting against each other and then the left and the right, same idea. That way you don't have to try to clamp onto the faucet body itself. Okay, so we're just gonna just gonna mark it. Um, remember, you do want to make sure that you know, remember that the pipes need to go in there almost all the way to the back of the threads there on the compression fitting. You don't want to cut short and then be like, oh crap. And again, please remember, shut the water off the whole house, let the pressure out, okay, before you get started. We don't need to make a mess. Okay, looks like the cuts came out good. I've got everything in place and ready to uh, tighten down the compression fittings. Okay, now we're practically done here. I'm going to show you the rest of the assembly of the faucet, even though the wall's not here. You will understand, you know, the point of getting the rest of these pieces together. And don't forget to do a pressure test of this system uh, before you close up the wall, okay? Make sure to cap off up here, turn the water back on the house, turn the faucet on. You might even, you know, turn it on a little bit, run some water into a bucket. And then turn the faucet back off, put a plug in here, and then turn it back on and make sure there's no leaks anywhere, okay? Double check everything. All right, so we have this, this metal sleeve here and this white thing here. This is a pressure, not sorry, a pressure, it's a temperature safety kind of thing. It slides in right here on front. And what it is, is you can, it's, it's two pieces. So you can adjust this, uh, this piece right here so that when you're working the handle, um, you can shut it down so it can't get all the way hot in case, in case there's a problem with your hot water being really, really hot and people scalding themselves. Um, anyway, that's what that is. Actually, let's put the, uh, the trim piece on first. That's going to fit better. And then put the skull guard on. Now this handle is a two-piece kind of setup. Uh, the first piece is this black piece right here, which is the handle adapter. And it uses the Phillips head screw that came with it. Okay, you can see right now that, um, well actually you guys can't see it. All right, so you see the big uh, piece of black plastic right here, it sits right up against it. So when you turn the faucet handle on, it turns all the way around and goes to max heat. So if you want to cut that back, say like you only want it to go that that hot, well let's take this, just the front part, okay, get back in there, and we're going to set it to there, okay, see how it's going to stop it, now the handle stops short, and that's how you keep it from scalding if you have really hot water at your house, and you want to cut it back a little bit. So you're going to put the handle on, and then the screw comes in from underneath, and you're just going to put that on too. Alright, now for the shower head, we have our shower head arm. The long side is the one that goes into the wall, okay? And uh, here's your little trim kit. A lot of times it's easier to put the trim kit on right now and slide it in from this direction because it, it can a lot of times if you push it in from this direction it'll scratch all the way. Okay, and we don't want any scratches. Um, and speaking of scratches, when you put it on here, alright, there's a couple ways to tighten this up. One, you know, a lot of people will like these slip joint pliers, but the teeth a lot of times will scratch it. Though, if you keep the teeth closest to the wall as possible, and very careful about not letting that rinse slide, the trim plate normally covers any scratches. Channel Locks does make a, uh, a smooth jaw pliers, you know, that don't have any teeth whatsoever, um, so they have much less chance of scratching. Sorry, here I am. Or, and uh, this requires more hand strength, than using the pliers, but if you have a decent sized screwdriver, nothing too lean, you can put it in there and rotate it around. 
but you're going to have to support with your other hand really good over here because you're putting a lot of twist and torsion on all this in here and you can't just, just twist it, okay? So you're going to have to have a lot of good support but that way you don't have a wrench touching it at all. But to be able to get it tight enough like that, you, like I said, you, gotta, you have to have uh, better hand strength than a lot of people do. All right, at this point here, you can obviously just throw the shower, the shower head on, um, but it's time for me to do my water test. Guys, thanks for joining me here on this Moen Foss install. Now remember, if you don't have the exact same model, it's okay because this installation will be almost completely identical for almost every single model Moen out there right now. Okay. Now, if you want to get some of the parts and tools and things I was using in the video today, I'll have Amazon links in the description down below. You can click on and get some of the same professional equipment for yourself for your job. All right, now right over here, you guys want to do me a favor and slap that face right there. Subscribe to my channel. That helps out. Share the video so other people can see this project as well. Directly below that will be a link to my website. I got almost all my videos there from a collection of everything, and they're organized pretty well there. Much easier to find than trying to scroll through the YouTube channel. Over here, I have a couple other YouTube videos for you guys to check out. Guys, thanks again.